Most infants chew on various toys and blankets, especially while they're teething. Some kids with autism or signs of autism continue to chew well beyond infancy. So whether they are chewing on their hands, on their shirts, or their sleeves of their shirts, or any non-food items, chewing can be a real problem. A common intervention that is sometimes suggested is to give them a chew toy. Hi, I'm Dr. Mary Barbera, autism mom, registered nurse, board certified behavior analyst, and best-selling author. Each week, I provide you with some of my ideas about turning autism or signs of autism around. So if you haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel, you can do that now. When my son Lucas was a preschooler, after he was diagnosed with autism, right before he was three years of age, uh, he used to chew on everything including his shirt sleeves, uh, shirt collars, toys and markers. Um, he used to chew when he was little. And I've had many clients as a behavior analyst and some online participants now that I run uh, online autism courses. I've had many people of toddlers and preschoolers um, often post about uh, their kids mouthing and chewing items and they want to know how to stop this from happening. We used to give Lucas a chewy tube, uh, which in hindsight was not a good idea, but many professionals still recommend chew toys, chew necklaces, or chewy tubes to give a child throughout the day or to redirect him to these chew toys um, once he starts chewing on something he's not supposed to. But when a child has excessive mouthing or chewing of clothing or objects, I think in many cases it's a medical issue. It may be caused by a zinc or magnesium deficiency or high levels of copper or lead in the child's bloodstream. These nutritional imbalances can also lead to picky eating and developmental delays in learning language. So instead of recommending chew toys, I recommend assessing and uh, making a, an appointment with the child's physician who can order blood work and, or you might wanna consider going to a nutritionist, maybe one that specializes in autism, who might be able to help you with knowing if it's a nutritional deficiency that's leading to all of this chewing. There are plenty of dangers involved with chewing. I've done video blogs on pica and mouthing, and pica is actually ingesting uh, non-edible foods, and sometimes that can be very dangerous, whether they're ingesting mulch or even sharp objects like nails or tacks. Uh, it can perforate your bowels. It could be a serious life-threatening uh, emergency, and so even putting um, things in your mouth, it, they could have chemicals in them or on them, and it could really expose your child to unnecessary toxins. So plenty of dangers of chewing. It also affects their, you know, um, social stigma. If you're a three or four year old and trying to be in a typical preschool and you're chewing on toys, it's unsanitary for the other children, obviously. It's also socially stigmatizing to have this behavior occurring. One of the first things we want to do is we want to assess the situation. How much are they chewing? Is it a once in a while thing or is it all day long, every chance they can get? When do they chew? Is this chewing just suddenly increasing or has this been like an ongoing thing? Um, you also want to look at when they chew, if they're alone, if you're giving them demands, if they're chewing. Uh, chewing does not always have to be uh, self-stimulatory behavior. It often is, but for some kids, it's a matter of getting attention, getting access. So some parents are so desperate to start stop their children from chewing on things that once they start chewing on other things, uh, the parents redirect them and give them a pacifier, which they love. So then it could turn into a function of, I chew to get good things. Um, I chew to get out of things. Um, so, but we want to keep track. We want to really take a baseline couple days on watch chewing and see what they're chewing on. You also, like I said, I believe you should do a medical investigation, um, in order to make sure that 
zinc levels are where they should be and the zinc to copper ratio, which I've talked about in another blog on um, supplement use, um, that zinc to copper ratio is really important for kids with autism and it's, it's oftentimes off, you know, way off where it should be. Sometimes zinc supplementation is what's needed to control chewing and get the child eating better too. And I'm not giving you medical advice. I don't want you to go out and just buy zinc and give the same dosage that somebody online told you to give your 30 pound child. That's not the point. We really need to do an assessment to see what is needed, what is off balance, if anything, and then to start preventing um, chewing. Now, in terms of prevention, babies do need to chew, especially during teething. But if an older child continues to chew with or without autism, I think uh, you need to intervene. And 95% of your time should always be about prevention. We want to look at not just chewing of non-edible things, but what are they putting in their mouth that they're supposed to? How are they eating? Are they using utensils? Are they drinking out of a straw, an open cup? Are they taking food off of a spoon? These are all 18 month behaviors. So if you have a three-year-old who is still using a pacifier or a bottle or um, not drinking out of an open cup, not drinking out of a straw, those kind of things should be worked on. Basically, you want to assess what's going in their mouth. Also, if a child is chewing on shirt sleeves, potentially put them in short sleeves. I know this was an intervention that worked for Lucas. We want to get rid of objects or provide supervision that um, when objects are around, like some kids eat Play-Doh or chew on markers. So then I would want to have the markers really uh, toddler-proof your house so that children are not going to be able to get to the things that they're chewing on that could be dangerous. And then what to do reactively when your child invariably will get something in their mouth. Um, you can, you know, if it's not a big deal, if it's just a, uh, a infant toy or something like that, that's not overly dangerous. You could ignore the situation. You could take it away from the child. Um, you could redirect but in some cases, at least until you get testing and learn more about how to prevent chewing, you might want to give a chew, chew toy that is non-toxic. Um, but this should be a, a short-term strategy, not a long-term, and it should be faded as soon as possible. So you do, if you are going to give your child a chew toy, make sure it's not toxic. Um, I know in the past, because Lucas was very little when this came out, I was not aware of the dangers of chewing on toxic plastics. Um, so now they do make chew toys that are non-toxic. So if you are going to give a chew toy, make sure it's not toxic, make sure it's meant for chewing. Um, but this should be a short-term plan, not a long-term plan. To learn more about my child-friendly approach, both for parents and professionals, toddlers through uh, teens, I would love it if you take two minutes, fill out this quiz, which is super easy, and then watch the, uh, the workshop that follows. You can take the quiz at marybarbera.com forward slash quiz, and this will help you get started um, learning more about how you can turn things around in your life. In summary, chew toys are frequently used to combat chewing, but I think this is a serious problem that may be caused by more serious medical issues. Ensuring that the child has no underlying medical issues like an unbalanced zinc to copper, copper ratio is very important when assessing chewing. Ultimately, the main goal should be to prevent chewing and other dangerous behaviors. Remember, take the quiz at marybarbera.com forward slash quiz to learn more about how you can reduce problem behaviors, including chewing. If you like this video, I'd love it. Give me a thumbs up, leave a comment, or share this video with others who might benefit. And I hope you have a good week. I'll see you right here next time.